This little video is going to be about the synthesis of chloroform via the haloform reaction. The, this reaction can be exothermic, and I'm going to do it with a little twist. Normally, one would use a, a SEP funnel or similar apparatus to add the acetone drop by drop to the sodium hypochlorite solution. I have 15 milliliters of acetone. On the left it can be seen in a graduate cylinder, and on the right in the 500 milliliter beaker I have about 385 milliliters of 15 percent sodium hypochlorite solution as used for sterilizing swimming pools. I picked this because it's a lot stronger than uh, normal household bleach, which is only maybe 3% sodium hypochlorite. What I'm going to do is simply add a bunch of the acetone at once to the sodium hypochlorite bleach solution so that we can see what happens when one doesn't pay attention to the fact that a reaction is exothermic. Let's have a go at this. Adding about 10 milliliters, we can see a layer forms on top as the reaction starts. There's a little bubbling. Chloroform will be formed. I'm going to stir this a little bit now with a glass rod. As we can see, stir it in, it turns cloudy. The beaker is warming up. Both solutions were at about 60 degrees Fahrenheit when I started. This is warming up quite nicely. I'll add the remainder of the acetone. and it's begun to bubble. As you can see, when you don't pay attention to a reaction that co can go exothermic, you can get a bit of a runaway. This reaction is small, and I chose it because it will not foam up out of the beaker, but you got a pretty good demonstration here of a runaway when you add <coughs> the two chemicals together too quickly. The temperature's risen to about a, that of hot water, maybe 120 Fahrenheit. That's as hot as it'll get here. But if the bleach had been even more concentrated, this would have foamed right up and out of the beaker. What I've shown here is why you use a sap funnel or similar apparatus when doing this reaction, do add the acetone dropwise, drop by drop, to the bleach solution, rather than adding it all at once, like I did. We will still have formed uh, our product here. This will settle, and we will find little blobs of chloroform at the bottom of the beaker. I'm going to let it settle. It's pretty much stopped boiling and reacting now. There's a few bubbles coming up, 
but this is finishing uh, right off at this point. It's actually starting to cool off too. It was warmer a moment ago. I'll pick up the video again in a little while when uh, separation is occurring and we can see the chloroform produced at the bottom of the beaker. About an hour ago I did the reaction properly, the way it's supposed to be done, drop-wise with a sap funnel in another beaker, and here I'm showing the bottom, we can sort of see the little droplets of chloroform that have separated out and are at the bottom waiting to be collected. What I've done at this point is take both 500 milliliter beakers that I did the halo form reaction in to make chloroform. I poured the uh, dominant top layer, which is like 95% of what you get, out of the two beakers and you can see this waste layer almost filling the beaker on the right. I've set up a sump funnel with a small beaker under it, and we can see that the balance of the product is in the sap funnel where uh, two layers are forming. Our chloroform will be at the bottom, and we'll be able to just drain it off into the little beaker when it finishes separating. The chloroform obtained can then be uh, washed with water and re-separated and then stored in a uh, amber-colored tightly closed bottle. The fumes of chloroform of course should not be breathed. It is a potential carcinogen. Treat it with care and respect. My yield here from this reaction will be about five milliliters of chloroform. Here I've released the five milliliters of chloroform from the sump funnel and it's now stored in a sealed test tube. I will of course have to uh, wash it and uh, purify it, and then it will be uh, completed. Thanks for watching, and as always, there'll be plenty more to come.